Welcome everyone to the Plastic Cards Podcast, the show where we break down the video game news of the week. My name is Fonzie, I'm joined <laughs> by my co-host, indie game dev extraordinaire. He's a toe jam to my real Gavin Jones. Oh, Gavin, how are you? I like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> YouTube video. <laughs> I didn't go with any of my planned uh, stock uh, text. That's why I was blanking on that. But oh, gotcha. <laughs> how the hell are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm really good. Had a nice, uh, relaxing weekend. It's yep. been a nice Monday, so uh, ready to go. It's never a nice Monday, though, right? It's always just a tolerable Monday. I had a pretty good Monday. Okay. It's pretty easy. I, I've never had that once in my <laughs> life, but okay. <laughs> Nice. Any uh, video games playing over the weekend? I was playing, uh, just yesterday I started Scourgebringer, mm. and uh, I was playing that, and I'm not very far into it. Um, I'm still a little bit frustrated with the wall running system, but really? it's cool. It's really fast paced, um, and in a lot of ways, oddly enough, it kind of reminds me of Doom. Really? Uh, I want to like a footage of that. 2016. I'm a big, uh, I was very interested in playing this. Yeah. Um, although the graphics remind me, there's another roguelite that I can't remember, but the graphics kind of remind me more of that. Some people said this is Celeste mixed with Dead Cells. I completely disagree. Yeah. Uh, it's like barely got like, I don't know, like, yeah, you attack somebody and they're hit stunned and you just finish them off. So I guess that makes you Dead Cells. Um, but like, look how fast this person is moving. You're going to be... A lot of times you don't even touch the ground for a while. It's very I get Devil May Cry vibes just when the build, ability to like string attacks and jump in the air and stay in the air, right? Is that R- at all what's going on with um, the mechanics? I mean Devil May Cry is about like mixing up attacks. This is literally you have one attack that you're doing most of the time. I still don't know when to use my fucking gun. Um oh, you I have also one? haven't got past this first area. Um yeah, so you have a gun on the far left. Gotcha. Um and even when I upgrade it and make it super powerful, I forget to use it. Um that thing sucks when it fires off. There you go. Um, it looks beautiful. Yeah. Your dashes are not invincible, which I think is cool. Um, it's fun to play. It's very, very fast paced. And I think that's a nice thing is like, um, rather than doom's way of pushing you forward towards enemies. Yeah. Um, where it's like, if you push towards enemies, you get your health back And this. It's like, if you don't push towards enemies, they're going to fuck you up. Okay. They're going to start <laughs> firing projectiles. So you got to be pushing forward to, um, so that intention or that, um, the thing, yeah. Keeping you incentivized rather to keep getting closer is just the fact that you'll take more damage if you're further away. Right. And I think, I think part of two, what kind of reminds me of doom a little bit with this is, um, you know, c- certainly like the, a little bit of the metal and technology theming, like it's sort of, it's, it's got this ancient thing that, that appeared on, I believe it's earth. Mm. Um, there's technology, like you see these little turrets in there. Uh, yeah. You see these demon looking thingies, and I think they are some sort of demon thingy. Um, there's, uh, and every, when the fights start, metal music starts up. Okay. Um, so, and the, like, there's blood. There's a lot of, well, certain, like, not when you kill enemies, and I do kind of wish there were blood effects when you kill enemies, but you see those little blood droplets you yeah. collect. That's your currency. Oh, interesting. Um, when you die, you go back to this, like, mythical tree. Uh, that's surrounded by like bloody water that you can run in and Whoa. it does cool effects. So yeah, it's sort of metal. Um, Do you have those abilities from the get go or are you upgrading and, and adding moves? There's certain upgrades like you're getting, I have a, I have a ground pound that I f- frequently forget to use. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of upgrades, but I would say um, you're probably going to be able to, I, I bet it's possible to beat the game from the start. Gotcha. Um, but that being said, I don't even know if it has an end. Um, no, it's not procedurally generated. It's procedurally generated. Oh, it is. Yeah, okay, but I haven't, I haven't even beat the first boss. Gotcha. I can beat the first mini boss, but I can't beat the first uh, boss. But yeah, it's gorgeous. It's really so far. I'm having a lot of fun. I get a little frustrated when I wall run when I don't mean to. But I see. Yeah. I really want to play this. Are you playing on keyboard and mouse or uh, controller? You can play with keyboard and mouse. I play with controller. Oh, gotcha. this is something also I really like. So. Um, it seems like every single room you defeat the first wave of enemies that's already there. Yeah. And then you immediately fight another wave. But, uh, when they spawn in, you see where they're spawning and the things that are closer to you spawn in last. So yeah. And that kind of creates an interesting effect where maybe by the time they've spawned in, everything else is, uh, already there, maybe firing projectiles at you. Yeah. So when things start spawning, I actually run to the other side of the room. And try and get the freshly spawned stuff first. Um, oh, gotcha. But yeah, it's neat. I think it's really cool. And that's dope. 
I hope I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what uh, What about you? Have you played anything this weekend? Uh, I did play a little bit of 1980X. You remember sending me that uh, that trailer, or just mentioning it to me? 1980 was this the um, Mega Man like game? No, oh, th- this no, is that, that was the Switch. other game. Yeah. yeah, it might be on other platforms too, but that's where I'm playing it is on Switch. Yeah, but uh, it's very dope. Um, there's something about the so they kind of their whole shtick is you're playing in this you know s- this kind of retro sci-fi world but you're all these different like God, games that that are were popular in the the 80s early 90s um so you have yeah. these like 2d um, beat-em-ups the side-scrolling shooting kind of gameplay i haven't got beyond that so there's yeah right. there's this this uh outrun kind of style but it's all in the idea that you're playing you're moving around in this actual arcade playing these games right and you're kind of there's a storyline somewhat to it um that's yeah, really cool i like this this idea a lot and how they I want to see more of how they tie these like games together. Yeah. Do you think so this game is ten dollars. It looks yeah. gorgeous. It looks really cool. Now you haven't beaten it yet. No, I'm I'm maybe an hour or two hours in. Uh do you think they underpriced it? I don't know because I, I it might be right on the money because I think the individual uh, experiences are smaller. So I think it's you okay. know them compiling a couple of smaller experiences. So I think it's fair to ask that fifteen dollar, maybe twenty dollar price tag yeah but it's 10 like 10 is yeah that's yeah. pretty low that is i wonder yeah i don't know if it's yeah. maybe it's short i don't know there's there's an argument though the the with balancing that price point the smaller you go the less risk there is for someone to jump into a new property and, and just buy it so maybe they actually bring in more fans by having that low price point right i mean there is but there's also sort of that expectation of like like my first expectation when I hear it's ten dollars is oh this is gonna be like an hour long it's gonna sure. be really short uh, so there is you know you expect some sort of trade off I wonder if and I imagine as you get further in the game or if you beat it then you can go back and play those games whenever you want like move around the Maybe. arcade physically and that yeah. would kind of add some kind of um, you know replayability to it but it's a cur- neat idea I'd be curious to know it looked like the guy in the beat 'em up was your your guy. So I'd be curious to know if there's sort of some yeah. theming like stuff going on in your real world. It starts affecting like how you imagine the game playing. Out. Right. It's hard to tell because there is something like that, like that going on. Your narrating voice is kind of describing being a loner and going through right. this arcade and finding friends. And I don't know if you're imagining yourself in the game somewhat too, or it's like relating to your life. I'm not, I'm just not there yet in the story, but that might be what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a neat idea. I forget the actual devs here. But um, I'm sure I could Google it and find it out <laughs> in a second. But uh, yeah, you had uh, described it to me or send it to me. Originally. I think I sent you a, the trailer. So High Bit Studios is the name of the yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, gorgeous trailer at least. And the art, yeah, and the game yeah. is super gorgeous. It's definitely like their fans. It's a love letter to that 16-bit style, yeah. you know, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo style. But yeah, just been playing that. Uh, didn't get to play a whole lot of games. I did jump into Minecraft for a second because. They announced these new, and you have no idea what I'm talking about because you hate Minecraft, but they, <laughs> they announced these new biomes, and they're kind That's of, cool. they're going into deep uh, territory territory with the uh, nether. You know, that was that like weird, like hell you could go into or like you put the world. eyeballs in the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you, now there's just like weird natural life that's there there already was before but like they're just right. fleshing it out more stuff there's like a forest down there but it's only on pc and in beta so i, I thought it was on mm-hmm. xbox it's not there yet but um so I, I loaded it and then i just got stuck for another five hours playing and dinking around in the game <laughs> more biomes is cool i mean that's yeah. more to more to explore yep yep i wonder if and it made me it kind of got the gears turning in my head will we ever see a uh, Minecraft 2. I don't know if we need to in the next five years. I feel like you could just keep adding yeah. stuff to it. Keep building, keep making it just more complicated and deeper. And I don't know what it'd be. I think the other right. thing with it, too, is like, what do you do for it? Because there are definitely voxel-based games that have done you know, smaller voxels. They've done yeah. voxels with all kinds of physics. You can look at like the Lego MMO. There's all sorts of crazy stuff. So... Yeah, what do you do? Part of the beauty in Minecraft is its simplicity. I assume I've never played it. <laughs> um, but Which yeah. I can't. Uh, I still can't wrap my head around it. But yeah, do they just go into more? Like you mentioned that the games have already done that. Where can you break down these these voxels? I don't know if they're using voxels here, but like, can you break down the, yeah, the environment further than their normal yeah. uh, shapes? Or there's that whole RTX thing. Do they kind of just push that forward? As far as like what the next gen of Minecraft would be, they just allow that to happen, implement into the game. It's just better graphics, though. Like, yeah, I I don't know. Yeah, there's been a bunch of editions. I think this trailer's for one of the consoles, but like on Xbox, it looks really good. Uh, they abandoned that whole Xbox upgrade thing they're gonna do. 
for the Xbox One in Minecraft. But what was that? It was just like a, a HD kind of like high res version that you see the people do with mods on PC. Oh. They were gonna have like a sanctioned version for Xbox, and they just kind of give up on it. But why? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. But What's, that's that doesn't give anyone an unfair advantage. Like no, you could, st- you could still play with other people. Your version looks gorgeous. Their version looks like poopy. Right. Uh, <laughs> or you know, whatever. but this game will stand the test of time because it's made to. I don't know. Look, that certain style because so it it'll it stand matter. the test of time because it's never st- it didn't stand the <laughs> test of when it came out. That's true. That's true. There's something about it though, even though it had that weird, uh, and I didn't realize this till later on. This game was demanding the play on basic computers when it came out. Like, yeah, and it didn't look like that. It looked like it's very simple. The textures, the artwork, but there's just under the hood. I guess it's hard to. to well, do. and that's why I did a custom engine. Voxel engines. You you kind of need to do something custom because they it's got a. It's essentially got to be its own chunk of the game engine. It can't be something you throw in later. Um, it's it's t- voxel engines are tough to do. You know what? Um, there is a, a name I'm blanking on, but there's a really popular voxel game coming out that uh, the dev keeps upda- updating on Twitter. It was the one where I showed you them breaking through like brick walls, yeah. and there's kind of a time yeah. frame mechanic where you have to plan yeah. your route. I forget the name of it. I have I'd like no to idea up. what you'd even. Yeah, 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 maybe. So I'm kind of going down the rabbit hole here. That's on voxel it is yeah yeah voxel's too general but yeah. yeah there's there's you know devs exploring that and i with the whole like especially that voxel game that i'm blanking on they have that rtx that shader stuff turned on it looks fucking gorgeous yeah. along with the crazy realistic physics so yeah there's there's a uh, room for you know now you have all these devs w- growing up playing minecraft and had taken so much experience or influence now they're gonna create something dope so the future is is uh, looking pretty pretty bright, Gavin. It's crazy nuts, so crazy nuts, is what they say. What uh, and so yeah, no other games or anything you've been playing? Uh, no, for didn't get back to uh, what you call it. Uh, yeah, but there's that addicting. Planet. Okay, um, yeah, Journey to the Savage Planet, right? Yeah, I gotta get back to that. Yeah. I I really don't think I'm that far from the end, but gotcha. I'm, I've liked what I played. Yeah, um, gotta get back to it. Nice. Well, yeah, I didn't really play much either. Um, just yeah. been. Reading about the internet and about video games and some video game news. We can get into the yeah. video game news if you want, Gavin. Yeah, a lot of almost like video game politics in the stories we kind of have pulled up. Somewhat, today. yeah, like behind yeah. the scenes. A lot of which I didn't realize before. Some of the news we're getting now is from investor meetings. Yeah. So as soon as that Q1 happens, that first quarter of the year, this is when all these uh, these companies are talking to their investors and kind of giving them the rundown for the year. Yeah. So stuff like the Rockstar Games thing that we'll go into, that was announced in an investor meeting. That's the reason why they had to talk about that. Yeah. There's Activision News. That was revealed in an investor meeting. So it's all them just because they have to now tell their you know investors, like, here's what the plan is. Like, you right. don't have to worry. Don't pull out. Yeah. Uh, and so we'll get news from that. But um, yeah, so the first big one is a Rockstar Games co-founder Dan Hauser is leaving the company. Uh-huh. And I want to get your take on this, Gavin. This is a I have no take. <laughs> well, we can theorize like what does this mean for Rockstar? It's I didn't realize how influential and how a big of a deal Dan Hauser was over there, and uh, not only in writing but also like funding or founding what we know as Rockstar today. Yeah. Uh, there. So the original art- article is from Matt Kim of IGN. Dan Hauser, the co-founder of Rockstar Games and head writer on games like Bully, Red Dead Redemption, and Grand Theft Auto, is leaving Rockstar and Take-Two Games in March. News of the departure comes from Take-Two Interactive SEC report. In a statement to IGN, a Rockstar Games spokesperson said, Sam Hauser's role with Rockstar Games, which he founded in 1998, remains unchanged. Sam and the team remain focused on current and future projects. According to the Take-Two Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, Dan Hauser, will be leaving the company on March 11, 2020. He previously worked on numerous GTA games as well as Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. Hauser already took an extended break that began in the spring of 2019 after the uh, development of Red Red Dead Redemption 2. Dan, along with his brother Sam Hauser, were executives at BMG Interactive before it was acquired by Take-Two. The Hauser brothers founded Rockstar Games under Take-Two in December 1998. At Rockstar, the brothers wrote and developed games like GTA, Red Dead, also, Bully, Midnight Club, Los Angeles, and Smuggler's Run. I always forget they did Midnight Club. Yeah, that's a franchise they always have in their pocket to, to bring out, and I think people would still go nuts for it. Smuggler's um, Club, I couldn't even tell you what that is. I think, uh, so Smuggler's Run, I think that's another racing game, but it's like a different style oh, or like a gotcha. theme to it. Mm. Um, but he's, I guess, so Dan Hauser leaving is a big deal. He's an influential writer there. So yeah. I wonder, what does this mean, them going forward thematically? I'm sure they're still working on now behind the scenes that new GTA you'd have to imagine they're working on what's right. next for GTA so do their games suffer 
because they have that lead writer leaving, I imagine they can still find the best talent. Be right. Yeah. I mean, they even say like, what is last titles? Like, yeah, he worked on, what was it? Bully, Red Dead Redemption one, as far as writing goes. So yeah, I don't think he's the head writer there anymore. I think he, he he's kind of more of this executive role and I'm sure these people kind of know uh, what's expected. That's true. And what to do. And, to push the limits. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess it's too, like it, it is a lot of us reading into when somebody of this high profile leaves a company, you have to imagine there's still a bunch of people there who still cre- are just as passionate and want to make sure they, when it's the baton is handed to them, they keep it going with that same yeah. kind of level of quality. Uh, there was stuff, I want to say Jason Schreier talked about it behind the scenes, just possible rumors of Dan Hauser leaving in uh, the wake of like indecision as far as like how quickly they should put out games as far as like the, the parent company above them putting pressure on rockstar to just like pump out stuff faster, but they've been kind of traditionally, they take their, their sweet ass time, yeah. but they benefit from that by dropping these like huge temple games. Yeah. So does Dan Hauser being gone mean that, that whatever that parent company I want to take to is able to influence more on them. Like they make them put out games faster, but they're yeah. not as fully fleshed out as they've been. I don't know. And that's still a rumor. I think the, I don't know, like he's a co-founder. Like they don't, yeah. at the end of the day, I don't know how much sway he had on the company as, as sure. it was. Sure, Apparently from what I read, it seems like he did, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Or at least creating the kind of the, the theme or the, the, you know, the mood in the company as far as like the level of quality they're willing to, to let out the door. You know, right. I don't know if that leaves with him, but yeah, it's interesting. Um, we'll yeah. see, you know, what changes with that. Uh, really with, with Rockstar, uh, what's next for them? I would have to imagine some kind of GTA thing, but uh-huh. the, I guess they're going to ride. Well, GTA five still sells every year. It's always like top of the, the list uh, for some reason. But, yeah. um, and then you have Red Dead Redemption two that just came out last year. So you can kind of ride those coattails for a while and work on the other stuff in the meantime, especially since they have the online stuff, keeping them going too. people are still buying stuff on GTA online on Red Dead two online. Yeah. So you can just rely on that till the next thing comes out. I wouldn't mind them going back to more of a frequent release of games because I think was a PS2 area where there was stuff like Bully coming out often, Red Dead. There was the, the, the driving games. It would kind of like go back and forth between these different styles of games. There's that ping pong game at one point. They kind of were able to put out stuff and just like move away from the big games that we know them from, but like still put out other, other right. games. But yeah. I don't know if there's any desire to do that. Let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our next door, Gavin, Microsoft Xbox. Boss says Amazon and Google are the main competitors going forward. Um, yeah, this one's interesting and really ties to streaming future of, of video games. But uh, this is from Tom Warren of TheVerge.com. Microsoft's head of gaming and Xbox, Phil Spencer, has revealed that the company sees Amazon and Google as its main competition for the future. Speaking in an interview with newly launched technology publication Protocol, Spencer said, When you talk about Nintendo and Sony, we have a ton of respect for them, but we see Amazon and Google as the main competitors going forward. That's not to disrespect Nintendo and Sony, but the traditional gaming companies are somewhat out of position. I guess they could try to recreate Azure, if I'm pronouncing that right, but we've been invested, we've invested tens of billions of dollars in cloud over the years. Um, So Azure is their uh, streaming platform where they can stream games. Um, I wonder how this ties to, to jump out of the article, how it ties to that, that alliance they made with Sony. Like that was a couple months ago where they were like, hey, we're going to work on some kind of cloud computing software. And is them not seeing Sony as a comp- competitor, is that because they made that deal or because they're looking so far ahead and seeing streaming as the future and not these traditional consoles? I would say it's probably unrelated to that deal. Mm. I think it's it's kind of like you said for the latter. It's They think streaming is the future. I mean, heck, even Reggie fils said that he thinks. Oh, really? Yeah. It, How far is that future and are, we, are they prepping too early for that kind of thing? I, I mean, people have been prepping for... Uh, I remember when on live streaming. Yeah, that was one of the first ones. Yeah, that or at was, least popular ones. God, that was probably. That was Xbox 360 era Xbox. Original oh yeah, era. that was that was eight years ago. Yeah, dang. At least maybe nine, ten, possibly. It yeah. was. It was probably ten actually. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was such a long time ago, and that was pretty cool at the time too. Like I don't it, remember if it worked. I just remember it being a thing. I played it and thought it worked pretty good. Um, I definitely remember being kind of wowed at how quickly a game loaded up. Mm. Just, I clicked, like you saw the video and you clicked it and you're in there. Yeah. Um, and that Did was that, cool. I remember they had a controller. Did you need some kind of dongle thing or was that just straight through the internet? I forget with, with uh, online. Uh, I think there was a dongle for, for, the controller or something. for your TV. 
Gotcha. So if you oh, want to play it on your TV, but I just played it on my PC. I see. Um, but yeah, it was very impressive. I still remember the menu that was uh, like you could like it was just a ton of screens playing games, and you could click on those screens and it'd take you in to watch. Uh, no, I roughly remember that. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, then, do you think there are they then appropriately? looking for the streaming as being the next big uh, battle and kind of not concerned about losing with PS5, with Xbox Series X? They're not really losing, early? though. That's true. But uh, do you think that is that too early to just kind of be like, yeah, that's cool that w- whatever Sony doing, but we're looking to for the next big battle, which would be that streaming platform? Maybe, but they've, they've also kind of been off doing their own thing for two, three years now. Yeah, so that's true. I, I think they've they almost consider themselves out of the race at this point they're in their own race they're pulling a nintendo we're gonna we're gonna race in our own uh that's true we're gonna have a race with just me <laughs> yeah and uh and i can't lose <laughs> i can go just as fast as i want to <laughs> right. uh, no you're you're right about that in the sense that they're really trying to while sony's been locking on these exclusives xbox is just even to their own detriment they're just like put out the game on whatever on pc right. on this so you can stream it with our new service like they're really trying to just get their products to as many people as possible and maybe yeah. that's the better way to clear that ground or even start their own success somewhere else yeah. and not with the traditional like we're selling a console that so, that, so that's something i want to note as well um so due to the game pass um i i saw an article on uh, gamma sutra i believe uh, about um who are the guys that made uh uh I shoot it. was it a game yeah, uh, Outer Outer Worlds. Oh, um, not Bethesda. It's uh, Obsidian, right? Yeah, Obsidian. Uh, Obsidian doesn't know how Game Pass affected it. Oh, right, because there's like two million sales, two million in sales reported, but it's linked in with that Game Pass thing, right? I don't think it is. Oh, okay. So they just made two million in sales from selling the game, and so they, yeah, they oh. did, they don't have enough. I and it makes me wonder: Is Microsoft not getting them enough data? I assume they are. Um, right. You know, how did being an Epic game store exclusive affect that? Uh, it's so bizarre. Also, we've got, um, you know, the switch version coming out soon, although that has that been delayed, delayed right? due to the, uh, coronavirus. Right. Right. Um, yeah, it's see, and I wonder how that, yeah, that kind of muddies the waters because is, is this included? Is it not included the idea of the game pass sales in there, but those aren't really sales. You just have the service and you get the game for free. Right. right, but I imagine there's some deal that. Well, Microsoft they're also basically making this game with no budget at that point. Mm. When Microsoft, when know, they acquired them, or yeah, them? like when you're when you're a first party developer, you practically have no budget. Oh, uh, I see. Gotcha. Yeah. I really hope they make a sequel to this game, and I really hope the gameplay doesn't suck next time. I think the sequel's where it's at because that's where yeah. they kind of learn and adjust depending on the community. Yeah. So it's always the the sequel is what you want to hope for. Like I'm thinking of Uncharted, where I never really liked that first one. The second one is yeah. when they just go balls to the wall and they have that awesome train level. They just they start to figure out what they're doing, just like a show. We always talk about it. It's like that first couple episodes, even first season. Sometimes you don't really have to watch. It's right. the second season is where they really start getting in there. Yeah, I mean if they just and I think the thing that sucked is when I played that game, I just come off of Borderlands Three. Like if that game and Borderlands Three, but it, I mean there's a lot of similarities. So if that game and Borderlands Three can just make a baby. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's my that's my game of, of life. It's <laughs> my game of my lifetime. Game right of life, there. yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's I don't know. That's that's interesting. Um we have no idea what Sony's and it's another thing too, right? Like people say, you know, who's winning that generation, however you want to yeah. name it. It's a new generation coming up here soon. Uh yeah, and the winning is quote unquote. It's an easy yeah. term, but it's like there's so many ways you can because you could say Sony's selling more, uh, at least with this current gen, they sold more consoles. But with stuff, with the stuff that uh, Xbox is doing, with having Game Pass, yeah. uh, PlayStation doesn't have anything like that. They have their service PlayStation now, but it's not at all set up like the like Xbox has. The way you can even stream those games or right. just the quality of games that they have for free is nuts. Yeah. So they're kind of going into different lanes and having success in those different lanes. And then yeah. Nintendo is, you know, just trumping over all of them by selling the the software and the hardware and just yeah. doing awesome with it. So. One thing uh, I will say with this new generation that I really wish these console makers would do, and I have no reason to think they'll do this, but uh, so right now it's like they're they're announcing the same things. Like both of them are going to have ray tracing. Both of them are going to have uh, solid state hard drives. Yeah. These are going to be very poss- uh, powerful. Uh, a lot of these games are going to allow for cross-play compatibility. So to, to a decent margin, there's not really a difference between the two consoles. Wouldn't yeah. it be amazing if I could use my Xbox controller? 
my PlayStation and my PlayStation. So like coming over to your buddy's house. Yeah. Like oh. with Bluetooth, really, I mean, you can do that with PC. Like my controller, my, my PC rather, will recognize whether I'm using an Xbox or, or a PlayStation because right. it's just through, through Bluetooth. So yeah. you think it's just up to them to get rid of whatever uh, thing in the way, letting your, your box talk to that that new. Right. Or just like with the, with the Switch, I can use a PlayStation controller on there. You just have to like sync it through Bluetooth. There's an you extra can? dongle. Yeah, you have to buy an extra dongle to oh. talk to it. But That's it's cool, possible huh? and they, they don't care. They might not even know what the fuck's going on over at Nintendo. They State. probably don't know what's yeah. going on. <laughs> but you have to buy a GameCube adapter <laughs> for it and plug it in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but but it's possible. So I like to think that these console manufacturers are going more in that direction yeah. where they're letting cr- at least crossplay happen. There's a lot of that going on. So maybe at the very least they can throw you a bone and you can use your controller on. Because yeah. imagine we don't go to friends' houses, but imagine you go to your friend's house, you have whatever fucking controller you have. I mean, all these kids with their fucking, like when we, when we have parties at your place, uh-huh. like your little nephews come in here, right. they, they play their Minecraft. Yeah. It's like, yeah, just bring it over whatever you got. Bring over your switch, throw it in here. Let's, mm-hmm. Let's build a giant block dick. Um, you <laughs> know, kids. <laughs> you know, kids. Yeah, <laughs> they grow up so fast. Um, yeah, that is a cool future, a cool idea. And you yeah. think that just takes out the hurdle of you want more people just being able to play the thing, being able to download the thing and buy it. I think actually the main reason I originally kind of came up with that and why I really hope it happens is uh, I think uh, finding games have been slowly making a comeback for a while. Mm. I think they're they're poised to just take over. Yeah. This next generation. Uh, There's a bunch of them, and it, especially yeah. at the point where Evo has to... It's big news when they leave one out. And yeah. I feel like that's huge now that... And also, Evo is rising in popularity, but the yeah. fact that they don't have... Was it MK? They didn't have Mortal Kombat in this last one? Oh, yeah. We'll break that up in okay, a bit. Okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, stuff yeah. like that, where it's like, that's that's how big this fighting community is, is built is becoming, and you yeah. have stuff like uh, Smash, where, yeah, like if, if you can have just a controller, doesn't matter what you have, right. whatever Mad Cat's fucking controller your mom or uh-huh. stepdad got you, it works like you don't have to worry about it. Right. And that's, that's what I want is I think, I mean, there's a lot of times they're like, which version are they going to play at the tournament? And, uh, you know, people, they're legit world's best fighters that don't play on a fight stick. They play on a gamepad because that's how they grew up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's perfectly fine. There's right. no, there's not really. Yeah. So I, I think it'd be really great. People can come over, play the same system, whatever controller they want, whatever's most comfortable for you. Yep. You know, if you want to play on a goddamn Switch controller, you're a weirdo. But go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, tiny I'm cramping. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'd I'd love to see that. I think if you do that, the barriers are down. It's just let's just fucking play these things. It seems like this gen is or this next gen, anyways, is definitely going more in that direction. I guess yeah. you could say, tied with the streaming thing, you could take that concept and run with it where. Not only can you bring whatever controller you have, that's all you need. You brought your controller to your friend's house, and right. that's what talks to the internet, and that's all. We're playing on the same console or the same streaming service. doesn't matter. Right. Um, but potentially with the streaming thing, that's a possibility if that happens. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, if the infrastructure doesn't fall right. apart, if we don't uh, blow Assuming up. They, don't, the, they don't build what I've seen streaming services need to do for years and mm-hmm. build a multiplayer game with one thing running the whole thing and just sending people views... So you could have, you know, a thousand person multiplayer game with no okay. lag whatsoever, aside from your input lag. Yeah. Um, so there, there, there could be potential advantages to doing cloud that people aren't taking advantage of yet. Sure. So. Although, and not to, to stay on the topic for too long, but still like we're talking about the streaming service and our streaming possibility as we go into next gen and possibly further than that. Yeah. We have a service now that's launching and they're having a rough time that Google Stadia has launched. And they're trying to do these things, and it's yeah. still just like they're hitting all these speed bumps. They have all these features that they promised that they haven't been able to do. They've apologized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wonder if they shot themselves in the foot by not saying, hey, this is a beta from the from the get-go. That gives the community a lot more like. But it wasn't. Patience. They charged people out the wing way. No, you're right. Thing. And I feel like they could have... They could have missed the opportunity to go. Hey, this is a beta. It's a we're working on it. We're yeah. working. and been implementing these features slowly, but they didn't. They said, "Hey, this is ready to go," and it yeah. wasn't ready to go. And now the free version is going to come out soon. I hope. Is that still down the line? Yeah, I mean, there, the free uh, tier is coming out okay. apparently soon. I just saw a thing today about it. It's gotcha. like Jesus Christ. That's where I want to jump in because right. that's what I was always interested. But you still got to pay for these fucking games. Yeah, that's that's another thing. At but least at least with on live, on live would let you do like a two day trial, gotcha. and that was great, especially with a multiplayer game. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and they're the, they're the first ones out the gate. So I mean, or at least like super popular big company backing it. So yeah. if we were to get to that future, this thing has to possibly survive long enough. Or really, Xbox is doing their own thing too. So whether 
this dies and Xbox takes it over. Like I want to see that happen. It's just right now out the gate, it's already kind of rough for these companies yeah. to get it going. Extremely rough. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that but goes. But it was good. also a non-gaming company coming into this. Right. You said you tried out Microsoft streaming service and you said it wasn't bad. It wasn't. I tried, They had a beta, was it last November? It was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. And it worked fine. Um, and it, granted, it was a beta. There was no skin off my back. Right. If that's a term, there was no money exchange. So it was just, it was fine. Like it worked. And even when it didn't kind of work and then when it dipped down in quality, I was cool with it because it was just a thing that I got to try. Yeah. If you took that same idea where it was, a Netflix service where you paid per month and the games were free. I don't think you'd mind if the quality went up and down right. and you know, st- stuff happened every once in a while. You'd be like, well, it's just a part of the service, but it did work for the most part. So yeah. it's there. The, the structure is there. It's just a matter of, I don't know, just improving it. But yeah. I mean, but that's such a delightful concept of, you know, being able to go home, you know, you're playing your new elder scrolls, uh, whatever. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, uh, you know, I got to go to the doctor. So you go to the doctor, you're yeah. in the waiting room, you whip out your phone, you continue your save file exactly where you left you off. Um, you know, you go home and you keep doing uh, and you cope with what the doctor just told you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you cut off your leg, but otherwise you still got yeah. your, you can still play Half-Life 5 or whatever. Right. Half-Life 5. <laughs> but uh, but well, it's also got that, that issue of uh, cloud, uh, you know, VR is not dead. I thought it would be dead by now. It's not dead. It's, it's strengthening a little bit VR and I don't think streaming is ever going to work for VR. You need the lowest latency possible yeah. to make someone not throw up. That's one where it really needs a one for one, a box locally, you know, working yeah. and as close to you as possible on your back or something. Cause it has to be right. fast. Uh, you can't have that. Put your whole PC on your head <laughs> with the Xbox one or series one. Maybe if it's hollow enough, you can just slide it on your head <laughs> and walk around. It'd be kind of dope. That'd be amazing. I wouldn't mind. Uh, what's the big uh, DJ dude, uh, Mousecraft or whatever? Um, he has that mouse head. Oh, uh, Dead Mouse. Yeah. Oh, speaking get, of get DJs, by the way, uh, before we we started this, I saw uh, uh, T Pain was lighting up his uh, his stream on uh, Twitch I and know he uh, streams. playing. Uh, oh yeah, he nice. is. Well, I'll tell you about it in a second. But yeah, he's <laughs> playing some Doom Eternal early. Whoa! Uh, oh shit! So, and here's the thing about watching a T Pain stream. Uh, a, he's actually pretty good. Nice. And B, this man is to his core an entertainer. <laughs> so even if he's not great at what he's doing, like he's, yeah. he's whatever he's doing, he's going to entertain the shit out of you. And I think nice. part of the reason he may be so good at, I think this is original Doom. Uh, yeah, this is Doom 2016. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I think part of the reason he's so good at a lot of online video games is typically he's playing from hotels because he's always touring and shit. Gotcha. Uh, so I think he's learned to play with the worst internet available, which is hotel internet. Oh, interesting. To get used to that, like an- anticipating where someone's going to be. To there's, yeah. there's a term for that. Is it like where you deal with lag? Anticipation, I guess. Okay. Yeah. It's like uh, when you're shooting, but, but in shooters in particular, like dealing with that lag and knowing where yeah. someone's going to be. Yeah, he's. I th- I think getting him for doing the. Uh, I like that. It looks like he's just in his uh, his regular ass house, like in a bedroom. I think that's a hotel. <laughs> oh, you're right. Okay, okay. you know that makes be sense. More blinged out. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Yeah, it's just him in a hotel, just playing, having fun, and he's funny as shit. Like, nice. Can you imagine being on a team with T Pain, like playing <laughs> yeah. some Overwatch or he shit? He has to be auto tuned the whole off? time, though. What? He has to be auto tuned the whole time. If he's not, he's not. I don't want to watch. Oh, come on! He built his 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 uh, career. This might be the newer, the newer Doom. No, it's not. Oh, okay. This this hallway it seems says familiar. Doom at the bottom. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> this is just I don't re- recognize this hallway unless this is like a challenge room or a. Some I don't remember this either. That's weird. Yeah, but I haven't. Uh, I definitely don't remember. Like it doesn't look like he's upgraded at all, so I don't remember this being something super early. But maybe it is. Uh, that makes know. more. Yeah, this seems more, more familiar. Is there a DLC? I don't remember. I don't remember that. Yeah, Doom Eternal coming out very soon. I'm so I'm fucking excited. Was it the twentieth? Uh, March something. Yeah, it's very soon. Fuck. Yeah, I saw it cusp. popped up on Steam today to pre-order. But. Nice. You know what? There's a deal where you can pre-order through. Is it Best Buy through Walmart for like fifty bucks instead of sixty? I just never pre-order stuff. I don't know. I no, never, there's no need to. Was it? <laughs> There's no need to anymore. It's not going to sell out. 
half of us buy all our stuff digitally anyway. See, that's the thing. Like, yeah, and I like to wait to whether I let the reviews influence me or not. I like to wait to see what the idea, what the yeah. temperature is. But I just wait till because yeah, I can just start downloading. What the fuck am I pre-ordering stuff? I mean, there used to be more demand than supply. Like I remember when Halo Two came out. Oh like, sure. I I feel like Halo Two was the last big launch where co- you couldn't buy it unless you were in one of those lines waiting outside. Yeah. You couldn't buy a copy for a month or two. It makes sense because you needed a physical copy, just like you're saying, yeah. and it could have ran out and and it did yeah <laughs> but nowadays there's no chance that's gonna yeah. happen like yeah i think it was i i remember i i feel like what it was was call of duty for or modern warfare launched and uh, even people knew it was gonna be big people were ready for this thing mm. um and i walked into fred myers the next day and there were copies laying around oh. i'm like oh do i not have to do that anymore <laughs> Like, yeah, with a yeah. console release, you're still going to have to do sure, it. Sure, that's where it gets tough. But even those um, companies are now selling them directly to you. Right. So at least they have that option. There's there's Amazon. Of course, there's Best Buy, Walmart. But a lot like Nintendo will sell you a console now. Like Sony will sell yeah. you, um, you know, controllers at least. Possibly consoles will go. We'll see what happens with next gen. But like now you have all these options. Yeah. And you don't have to go to a fucking store and wait in line like an idiot. It is going to be weird at these things now because uh, I know something. There was a big fighting game tournament recently for Smash Brothers. And, you know, the fucking crowd is because they've got this portable console. They're off there playing fucking Smash Brothers sure. while they're waiting for their turn to play Smash Brothers. Yep. Like <laughs> it's going to be weird going to a launch and people just got their switches out playing games. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's going to be not, especially the next Nintendo console, which apparently they said they're uh, I think their phrasing was like midway through uh, the Switch's life cycle, which I find oh. weird because I feel like it just started. But maybe that's because I just like got it, mine. But this might be like year three, almost four. It's probably year three or four, yeah. Damn, um, time flies. I don't understand how that works. And midway doesn't necessarily... I mean, it feels. I feel like it indicates halfway, but... But we won't know midway until we're at the end, right? Because like, right. how long are they going to ride Switch while it's selling? Like Maybe keep it going for another yeah. two years before you even bother and are they going to be wrong about that too? Is this going to be another 3DS situation mm. where they're like, we're still supporting it with right. what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They have a lot of indies now with the, uh, maybe they had it too with the 3DS. They relied on those indies, but I feel like they, they're really relying with the switch with the, with the, yeah. you know, the options on the switch um, marketplace. So maybe that's what they can bridge the gap or depend on with that new switch. It's like, Hey, we have all yeah. the same indie games that are, you know, fucking mobile ports, but they're on Switch 2 and they still work. Yeah. I wonder if they can rely on that. I wouldn't be surprised. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to watch uh, <laughs> T-Pain's, uh, T-Pain's stream pretty soon. Yeah. Um, well, Gavin, our next uh, news story is some more uh, next-gen info and rumors. It's Well, no, this is actually confirmed. This is a quote oh. from uh, PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> this is PS5's price is undecided so far, but Sony is watching one key factor. This is Eddie McCooch, and I know I'm saying that wrong, but it also sounds pretty dope. He's from GameSpot. I don't know um, how you'd pronounce that. I would lean hard into that name and just say, you know what? That's my fucking name. I definitely have am no uh, stranger to having a weird name. So McCutch. McCutch. But, yeah. There's either way, it always McCutch. takes you to that. <laughs> yeah, but huh. either way, um, he's holding it down over GameSpot. Um, so, what will the PS5 cost? Sony management responded to that question during an earnings call saying those details might depend on other factors, including the competition. What is not very clear or visible is because we are competing in the space. Uh, quote, that is from CFO Hiro- Hiroki Totoki said through a translator. It is very difficult to discuss anything about the price at this time. Depending upon the price level, we may have to determine the promotion that we're going to, going to deploy and how much cost we are prepared to pay. So it is a question of balance. It is difficult to speak concretely about PS5 pricing at this stage, Totoki said, but fans and investors can be sure that Sony will choose the optimal approach. I'm still nervous about this thing. Mm. Like they've they've shared so little details. They they're really yeah, shying really. away from showing anyone anything. They don't know about the price. Like something's going wrong behind the scenes. Mm. This smells like trouble. Do we have another cell processor on our hands? Like what's going wrong? I would here? hope not. I think and there's a lot to unpack or, you know, theorize, but I wonder, is this Sony learning from the that whole um, era with going from the, su- the success of PS2 to PS3 where they were riding such a high where they said, whatever we drop, the fans are going to want. So they said, here you go. It's 600 bucks. Fuck you. And they were like, we know right. the fans are going to buy this because they love PlayStation. That's not how it worked out. And they had to roll back and adjust and release the PlayStation 3 Slim and all that eventually worked out. 
but they right. had a hubris that they didn't realize. And so I'm hoping that they learn from that and they don't do that same. We're going to throw the, you know, release the, the best machine that the most high end, you know, gr- uh, hardware on it. And it's going to be bonkers as far as the price goes. I'm hoping they don't yeah. learn that th- or do, they learn from those mistakes. This makes me think that because they're waiting for Xbox, they are willing to make it competitive and not just assume people are going to buy it. They're going to make sure it's right. cheap enough to compete with them. But also, it, it reminds me of like if we're back to we're on the school, uh, like we're 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 in the l- the lunch line, just like talking out of our ass about what PlayStation and Xbox are doing. Right. And I feel like we're just making this up. Like, oh, at E3, uh, Xbox is going to be waiting for PS3 to announce their their stuff, and then write it down and hand it to a guy, and that's the price. It's like the reality is they plan all this stuff for months. So right. it seems weird for them actually in reality to be waiting for Xbox to see what they're doing before they release a price. But it seems like we'd be making. This I mean, show. I'm sure they also have a man on the inside of. Microsoft, like they maybe, yeah, yeah, just like uh, it's fucking uh, mob mentality, or they have not like that, that, but like they know somebody who's gonna say something. Yeah, like, sure. They're they're still, you know, they work for Microsoft even before but, a public leak you know, comes out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna get a leak. Um, so I don't think Microsoft has that determined yet either. Um, that being said, my God, this like Microsoft press conferences at E three have been consistently nuts mm-hmm. uh, for a while now. And they like what was last year the year they bought all those? It, uh, yeah, last year was the year that they were uh, show, announcing the fact that they had what Ninja Theory and it goes on right. from their Obsidian and so they were just dropping the 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 mic on all this stuff. Oh, I, I and it's one of those ones where is there? I don't know if there's anything left in the tank, mm. but because I I honestly can't keep track at this point of how many balls are in the air. Yeah, uh, there was a lot, and uh, so I don't know if there's enough to really blast us in the face again this year. I think they e- could blast us in the face just with the sense of last year they they announced all the acquirements they had or the the studios they acquired. Yeah. Now they can see they can actually go. Here's what they they're starting to make right. and start showing this using the Xbox Series X hardware. Then they drop the price and they fucking yeah keep blasting yeah. us in the face. Like there are more uh, announcements they could they could hold and and especially since Sony's not going to be at E3 again this year they're going to own that space yeah I don't know how long they can do that before Sony goes yeah that's cool here's our thing and then th- they also drop their right. crazy announcements I don't know also aside from them waiting on the price and what that will be how long can we expect these this is just me like hoping for the or just expecting the worst and hoping it doesn't turn out the way but how long can we expect these consoles to still be 400 500 bucks Especially we talk about ray tracing with the these are going to be five hundred bucks. That's They're going to be at least six hundred. That's the well, and that's the like consumer expectation that it is going to be four hundred, five hundred. But I don't think that they would be, depending just depicting by the hardware they'd say is yeah. under the hood, unless it's kind of you know they bring it back down a little bit. But that seems like this stuff because PCs are a thousand dollars is a is a kind of a standard price for it's a, a good fair PC, PC now. Yeah, right? yeah. And this is console stuff that's kind of trying to compete with that. They're always behind the the you know, the innovations, but yeah. yeah. Or like with cell phones, like the new iPhones, they're thousand dollar phones. You just get them. That's incrementally also, also the, the modern iPhone is more powerful than the switch. Like those are, those are a beefy machine inside of an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. With all the, yeah, the cell, not the cell, but the actual I mean, this, this shit can run Fortnite fine. Like, yeah, no, you're right. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm at least, I'm going to call Microsoft now, uh, 800 bucks. Uh, and that's that's them losing money. See, I feel I have initial shock in my brain, but I wouldn't imagine that I could see a possibility where that that's that happens. And it's not even unfair. It's not as yeah. far as like the hardware that they're saying this thing is going to have. Yeah, possibly. And they could because they're creating an infrastructure or um, ecosystem where their games run on all the different current you know consoles. They could say this is the high end. If you have the money, cool. It's going to look the best on there. We're always going to show that off first. But we still have the Xbox One X which is now, you know, 400 bucks, we could say at that point. And then you have the, the base model Xbox One, which is now $200 or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you have, even though you have that crazy expensive rig, you now have these options. So you're not locked yeah. into one. Maybe that's how they lessen the blow. But I think still consumers are going to be like, what the fuck did you just say? $800? <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. We're also used to spending money on technology now too at the same time. So I don't know. I think it's a different era we're in. Yep. Let's see how that goes, Gavin. Uh, Gavin, uh, this one is about Ubisoft. So this was uh, from Matt Kim of IGN. Ubisoft confirms five AAA games planned for release in late 2020, early 2021. Um, just a spoiler, Gavin, none of these are going to be Splinter Cell, apparently. So I know we've had our hopes up and we've heard rumors, but... Do you, do you care? Um, well, I do. I mean, I would like the idea of a Splinter Cell, but because uh, <laughs> I loved... When I first got my original Xbox, 
That was one of the first games I got to play. Calling it now. Uh, every light bulb out of the Mario and Rabbids too. <laughs> you might be right. <laughs> you might be right. Like, I, actually, you know I actually like what I played that. I almost Apparently finished that was it. Good. I need to finish it. Yeah. It was fun. That's what I, yeah, I heard that. And it was kind of surprising because I didn't expect, I'm not even sure what the gameplay was. What was it? Was it like a, it was like XCOM, but oh. uh, far simpler. Gotcha. Far easier. So almost XCOM for kids. Gotcha. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I had a blast. Nice. It's fun. It's also really cool when they did like a classic Mario world style thing where like, the, the the environment around you when you're doing the overworld like goes to the beat of the music. I love that. And it's, yeah. it's just so cute. It's adorable. <laughs> it's really pretty. And the rabbits weren't super annoying. Gotcha. Which is hard to do. Anytime I see them, they are. But yeah. it's also the trailers and commercials when I see them. Right. Yeah. I well, still, like when I see them, I like, in my head, I'm like, they're like, slightly less annoying minions. Oh, But sure. also I can't remember which came out first. I feel like the rabbits did come out before the minions, but I don't know. Good question. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that's a Bernstein Bears kind of thing where we start to dig into it. It's like they're always around and we can never figure out the why. Bernstein Bears? Yeah. What's that? I mean, old... Those books are old as <laughs> shit looking. So, well, uh... that's that. Uh, just in the sense of there's that whole um, issue with the name, with the, whether it's Bernstein or, or Berenstein. Do you remember that? Where How would it like, not be Berenstein? Well, that's the thing. There's this, it's a common, it's a name for it. It's like the Streisand effect where there's this mismemory or we remember being one way, but it was the, in fact, the other way. But it's like this idea of maybe there was two different dimensions. and we're There's just like, like no A in one. the Berenstein. It's actually Bernstein. Have you, you ever heard this? this? So huh. uh, let's break this down. So uh, Bernstein, Bears, we're going to figure this out. But the actual term is called the Streisand effect. We have talked about this concept just in the I, sense I thought of, it was the Mandela effect. You might be right. You might be right. I oh, think Streisand's is? a different Berenstein. So the actual thing is is Berenstein is how you'd pronounce it. But I remember Berenstein or Berstein, something like that. Berenstein Bears. Yeah, but it's Berenstein. Unless we were, we're also we were kids, so we couldn't breed for shit. Yeah, so. but everyone called it that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's the whole thing. And it's Berenstein uh, doesn't roll off the tongue it doesn't. like Berenstein Bears. No, it doesn't. I'm sure we could find the actual like controversy. But uh uh, how was our criticism in the 80s for Berenstein? It's Berenstein. I'm not going to say Berenstein. I'm never going to fucking say that. So right. I don't know what the... You could... To my death, I'm going to say Berenstein Bears. But that was the idea with that. You right, mentioned the Mandela effect where we remember being right. one way. Maybe we're in the alternate reality where it, it's not the case. Huh. But also that there's that Shazam or Kazam movie where people remember... Uh, um, they remember Sinbad being yeah. the, the genie, but it was, it was a Shaquille O'Neal. Right. Um, and so it's like, wait, which one happened? But I, still, I digress. It still doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> I, know, I know you proved it to me. Yeah. It still doesn't. Now I can't remember what the hell I think uh, Sinbad did. Um, I guess, you know, when you dig into it, he was just in a picture at one point dressed sort of as a genie. And people are like, oh, he's in that movie. Like right. it really boils down to that. Just like a miss. Uh, memory of what maybe, maybe it's just like we wish it was Sinbad. I think Sinbad <laughs> would have rocked a genie role, uh, and sure. Shaquille O'Neal would have done what he did. <laughs> uh, and apparently, we for, literally forgot it was yeah. him. Now, Steel, on the other hand, I was gonna bring that up. Steel we was can't dope. forget Steel. Steel was dope. Steel. I would love to rewatch that. Like, what if it's good? What if we watch <laughs> it and like, damn. Uh, is there a trailer you for can't, Steel? You can't. Oh, it's gonna be. Oh, it's gonna be rough. I think this is a different movie, actually. That's it's definitely a different. AKA movie. Raiders 2002. It's yeah. two E's, not Steel. Well, I I pronounce it Baron Steel. <laughs> oh, good. oh. <laughs> I watch this later, but let's see. Uh, <laughs> Steel Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Hey Google. Are we gonna get a takedown for this? There we go. I don't remember his mask looking fucking that know. dumb. Excuse me, Dan? You want to rephrase that? In the world. Jesus. <laughs> He's like, what? He's got a gun that can knock, like a pistol that can knock over a car? It's, it's oh, like, that was the cannon. Thing. Yeah. Well, you just have a cannon then. I don't know. This is more advanced. These actors, well, no. yeah, that kid must be tall because he doesn't make Shaq look that big. No. And Shaq is ginormous. What exactly am I supposed to be doing here? We make our own counter weapons to 
He's kind of like Batman, right? He's kind of a vigilante. I think so. Was this based off an actual hero? I want to like say it was. Superhero? It's kind of Robocop-ish. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm in already. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I'm in. Dude, we got to watch this. Yeah. This looks, it looks like it holds up. Oh. <laughs> Also, Shaq hasn't aged since this. He's he's gotten a little tubbier, but that's literally yeah, all that's no. changed. Yep, I would agree. Wow. I definitely don't remember him having a fucking gun. I think, yeah. What does he shoot with that gun? Oh, he's riding a motorcycle. He's got such a cute smile. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> and that helmet is leather, not a. Uh... Was that the same guy that plays a cop in every yeah, movie yeah. back then? <laughs> Carl Weathers from uh, Family Matters. Carl and Winslow. Thank Carl you Winslow. Very much. Yeah, who's Carl Weathers? He's another guy. Uh, Carl Winslow, you're right. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> that is a quality family film. I, yeah, I'm going to so watch cute. that again. That it's also kind of gives me, like. Like te- spoiler, but it reminds me a little bit of uh, almost uh, that little bit from. Uh, Is it a movie or game? Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Uh, okay, with like Grandma or the, the uncle, the uncle, or the aunt, Aunt May. No, I think it was his uncle. Oh, okay. It's like he idolized his uncle. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah with Miles Morales. Yeah, you're yeah. totally right. Yeah, gotcha. God, that was a good fucking movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a great like. Like I went into it, I'm like, it's just gonna be pretty, and then like, there's nothing there. That movie is flawless. That's what I thought. It yeah. is perfect. I took uh, my nephew to see it, and he was super crunk for it. And I just, I saw one trailer. I was like, oh, it's just like, some shitty animated Spider-Man movie, or just I could tell it's okay, it's beautiful. But then when we're watching, it's like, oh, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> it's like, like maybe one of my top, for sure, for sure, like superhero movies in general, but like one of my top Spider-Man movies. Like right. it just trumps all the other ones. It's just fucking great. And they were able to build on the history of Spider-Man. And it's just, yeah. Yeah. And then beautiful. The art style they, they created was its own thing. Like it's totally yeah. is its own kind of uh, theme and style. Yeah. I think the only thing like I wish that movie had was like 45 more minutes. Oh, sure. Because, I could say that Peter longer. Parker's storyline was awesome. Yep. Like that was tragic and great. Yep. Uh, yeah. All, like, but we didn't get, uh, what's his name? Like the noir Spider-Man. Oh, sure. They could have done more with that. Uh, anime Spider-Man. They could have done more with that. I'm not sure you can do much more with Spider-Pig. I love Spider-Pig. <laughs> but they could have gone for it. Like I want and John more Mulaney was characters. perfect. As yes, that. absolutely. Yeah. I, I still, the, the crazy thing about uh, Spider-Pig though, with John Mulaney voicing him is if, I hadn't been told that was John Mulaney. Mm. I would have just figured that was a voice actor doing a really funny voice. Yeah. Uh, but that's just John Mulaney's that's his voice. voice. He so. might not, not even have even known that he was doing a spider pig <laughs> right. impression. He's just dumb. I John think. Mulaney. Have you heard a story about how he got the thing where they're like, "Hey, we're doing a we're doing a Marvel movie." Yeah, and he right. like wasn't given any info. It was like, no, what to, no. yeah. <laughs> I don't even think he was told Spider Man. Yeah. He in or you out? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess so. How much is it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> we're talking about steel. Um, yeah. So the initial point of what we even got on that tangent was just talking about <laughs> <laughs> Ubisoft confirming these five, these five AAA games they have. Are these new? Or are these unannounced? Or are these just so these are planned un- for release in twi- late 2020? Oh, yeah. Okay. To, from late 2020 to early 2020. So 2021, rather. So they're kind of game plan. Um, so Matt came of IGN. So as we should the original know article. about all these. Then. We should. I think now they're going to start. Some of them we've known about. They just were pushed yeah. further down the line. Watchdog. I, I've forgotten yep. that Watchdogs right. had a sequel. That's the thing. Now out. that's yeah. going to be next gen as well. Um, but Matt Kim of IGN writes, Ubisoft will release five new AAA games in 2020 to 2021, with three of them getting released by the end of this year and two being released early in, in early 2021. And none of them will be beyond Good and Evil 2, apparently. Uh, we have, quote, we have evolved our organizational structure in recent months in order to strengthen our focus on high potential titles. And we are very excited about the idea of releasing five new AAA games in 2020 to 2021, mm-hmm. said Ubisoft CEO Yves Gilmo during the Q1 financial 2020 investor call. Uh, Ubisoft will launch five AAA games, as we've said. So that we have uh, Watch Dogs Legion, Gods and Monsters, Rainbow Six Quarantine, which I haven't seen much about. And the other two are also from Ubisoft's, quote, biggest franchise. During the Q&A portion, Gilmo, uh, Gilmo fo- followed up on the statement by confirming at least 
that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is not one of the five AAA games set to be released this year. Glad they haven't canceled it yet. <laughs> yeah, but then when does this game come out? Because they're doing so many like fucking out of the like uh, weeds concepts and and visuals, and it's like when is this thing gonna actually wrap up, or is this can this only be next gen? Then is that what they're really gonna just maybe push it to, yeah to two maybe. years? Maybe. So Rainbow just, Six, though, I'm so glad that it, they're gonna do stuff besides Siege. Like Siege can continue to live on it could. for a good long while. Uh, I don't know that there is much. I don't know what quarantine, quarantine is. Is that taking that same idea? Or it's is a this... single player game. Oh, so, that's more up my alley for sure. So this yeah. is June. June yeah, July. we've seen nothing on this basically. Got just like a concept uh, trailer. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, just the CG from it. But I mean, Rainbow Six is a legendary. Holy fuck! Yeah. And I think this. I, I want to say there was like this weird mutant thing that happened, or maybe it was aliens in. Rainbow Six, it was a limited time event in Siege. Oh. Uh, so I wonder if this ties into that. I know they're about to do another event like that. Gotcha. Um, because they have the big invitational going on right now, um, mm. which still blows my mind because I find Rainbow Six Siege, I love watching streamers play it, but I find this game in a tournament setting unwatchable. Is it because it's like they're just sporadic There's or so much complicated? Yeah. yeah. How are you going to. God, cool I hope idea. this does well, though. And that's so cool because Rainbow Six has b- always been, you know, it's, you know, you're a SWAT team going in to deal with SWAT. So dealing with some sort of alien presence or mutant presence or supernatural presence, yeah. that takes it in a new direction, keeps it fresh. I think that's going to be really fun because, I mean, we have a bajillion human shooty human games. Right. And what's right. this going to do differently? So that's really cool. Yep. And that's that's one of them. So that's between March 2020 and or sorry, April 2020 and March 2021. Um, so just kind of picking that apart, the two biggest franchises that, that, that weren't uh, mentioned, but they're just Ubisoft franchises. Everyone was was theorizing what could those be. Uh, Jason Schreier of Kotaku, he's always breaking uh, big news. He tweeted uh, right when this came out, anyone holding out hope for Splinter Cell is once again going to be disappointed. Sorry, it's AC Ragnarok, which is the code name, and uh, New Far Cry. So apparently those are the two mystery Ubisoft franchise games that are coming out. And I think it's time for another main mainline Far Cry. Yeah. They do their, agree. you know, mainline then the DLC thing or the side yeah. standalone. Which I like that model. Yeah. I think that's good. Yep. Ever I mean I've been on board ever since. I think the only one I skipped for the past, I don't know, 5 or 6 years was the uh prehistoric one that they did. Oh, right. Which is that same like uh engine, the same whole yeah. thing, but it was that prehistoric yeah. version of it, but all the way back to uh, fucking four, I think I've just been getting the, the main line, the DLC, and you're just going back yeah. and forth. So, yeah, whoops. Oh, yeah. That's, that's another reason uh, why I'm upgrading that thing. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. I, I'd i be curious to see. I, I would love to see a new Far Cry get, like, these Far Cry games are such Far Cry games at this point. Can yeah. they get away from it again? Can we get some? I'd love to see them kind of do something different, do something yeah. not super Far Cry, reinvent itself a little bit. Do, you know, a Far Cry 2, give us something... Yep. Maybe a, yeah, like the original a remake. again. <laughs> or just taking that idea of taking or changing the gameplay and doing like that yeah. kind of equivalent. Gotcha. Or, or crazy idea. Mm-hmm. They've got these massive maps, like do something really small, but just pack to the gills. Mm. Far Cry, your house. <laughs> <laughs> or hotel room or like, you know, right. something with all these different rooms and concepts. Oh, that'd be so cool. You could take the Siege engine possibly. That really only works like small scale though with the, destructibility and all that but uh, yeah yeah i mean play with it really because i think they do have to kind of pull out all the stops for this new far cry because they've just gone through all these different themes and you know places so it's got to be something completely different or going way back and redoing that original far cry the first one in the jungle maybe just take it all the way back right absolutely i think people i mean it's been so long since we've been to the yeah the old jungle with the big old leaves yep yep now, Gavin, uh, we have some more recent remaster news. This is Activision planning to release several remasters in 2020. This is also Matt Kim of IGN. Activision says that players can expect many more remasters and reimagined experiences from in uh, four or from in 2020 after the success of revived franchises like Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, and Call of Duty: Modern Warfare. During the Q4 F or Financial 2019 investor call earlier this week, Activision Blizzard CFO Dennis Durkin revealed that in addition to new games and IP, Activision will continue to tap into our portfolio of beloved IP to bring several remastered and reimagined experiences to our players in 2020. 
So Activision has a library of dormant IPs like Guitar Hero, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. There are also several Blizzard titles that could be remastered, including Diablo, uh, though the recent Warcraft 3 Reforged remaster has been met with criticism from the community. The company's only other announcement during the Vester call was that a new Call of Duty game in 2020, though the company did not reveal who the developer on this year's an- annual crazy. entry is. It's coming, I thought they were going every other year with these. Is this going to be a really small? And I'm cool with that. That's Give what I wonder. A little mini Call of Duty? Well, the, the Call of leaks. Duty kids? <laughs> for the kids this time. Uh, <laughs> the leaks for or the rumors for a while, the, the past couple of months, were that they were going to take that rema- the uh, Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare uh, re- remake and take that and apply it to the open world or the battle royale kind of aspect because they don't have that traditional mode as they did in Black Ops 4 where they did just a straight battle royale. Yeah. So the rumor was they were going to do that, but in addition to you know the, the normal release every year. So I don't know if this is maybe that or if they're going to do a remaster of maybe one of the Black Ops games or something, yeah. but it seems like it's going to be different this this year. I wonder what ever happened to the whole like battlefield mode in the newest Call of Duty. I've never that heard, one's live. I haven't I haven't heard anything about it. It's there. Uh, I did play it in the beta. I know I see it in the menu because I have the game, but I haven't played it in the the, the official release. But yeah. it's there. But it's still like fifty ish players, and it's a large map. Right. But uh, apparently, uh, people were digging through the files and seeing that you can actually as- access the entire map. And so maybe that was leading people to believe that there could possibly be like a, all they have to do is, you know, flip a trigger and then you can now play battle royale on the whole map. I, I don't know, that. but that's maybe their attempt to do that. Is that just that large map? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, the idea of bringing back Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for sure. Let's fucking do that. Cause that's just been a, such a dormant franchise and it. <laughs> you gotta really, make it not a buggy mess. Don't let yeah. the current developers touch. It. No, that last one was just such a, it's just such a disappointment. So if they could bring that back, I mean, people are hungry for that. Diablo, I'm not sure if there's a huge demand for some kind of remake with there. With, well, I with think that. they're, I think this is more Activision side that they're worried about with this. Not so much. The gotcha. Side. I see. Um, yeah, I just can't think of, it's, it's difficult for me to remember stuff besides Tony Ox pro skater and uh, Guitar Hero, which, boy, do I not feel like having that come no, back. No, no. Unless you do some kind of VR thing like Beat Saber's doing, Ooh. I would not go that. But really, Beat Saber's doing well with that kind of yeah. concept. And the too bad thing is uh, the company that makes uh, um, Guitar Hero, they've made some cool spinoffs. They even made like a card game that you could play at parties, and you could put down cards, and it'll like, add to the music. And really? It was really neat. Yeah. Whoa. And it's pretty innovative. They did DJ Hero. And DJ Hero 2, which is fucking awesome. <laughs> Those games were really fun. I always wanted to play them, but never played them. They were fun. Yeah. They were fun. It was very unique. Uh, even though it, even though it wasn't the best controller in the world, it was fun to play with. So Gotcha. Um, yeah, I don't feel the need for music games to make a comeback, though. No, at the very least, without the... Plastic the instrument yeah, the back, plastic yeah. thing, for sure, I think that's dead, but uh, maybe some kind of, you know, yeah. just digital version of that, but... Um, Gavin, this broke today. This is uh, Bioware plans a substantial reinvention of Anthem. One of the worst kept secrets. <laughs> yeah, because this uh, was gaming. reported a couple months ago, but I guess it was never official. I thought it yeah. was, and today they've they've yeah. finally commented on it. Um, this is Ethan Gotch, Gatch or Gotch of Kotaku. Bioware will seek to reinvent Anthem's gameplay in the longer term redesign of the embattled online multiplayer action game. Studio head Casey Hudson said today in a blog post, "This confirms a Kotaku report from November, yeah, all the way back in November." Uh, quote, over the coming months, we will be focusing on a longer term redesign of the experience, specifically working to reinvent the core gameplay loop with clear goals, motivating challenges and progression with meaningful rewards while preserving the fun of flying and fighting in a vast science fantasy setting. Hudson wrote in the post and to do that properly, we'll be doing something we'd like to have done more of the first time around, giving a focus team the time to test and iterate, focusing on gameplay first End quote. Um, just to jump out of the article, how do you feel about them? You know, finally announcing this, and is this is it possible for them for them to turn the ship around? We've seen it happen, not on this scale, but like there's No Man's Sky. I guess right. there's a final there's a Final Fantasy game that they were able to kind of bring back to life. I forget the name of it, but um, it's it's also tied in with uh, this Fantasy idea. Realm Reborn. Is it? Yep. Or oh, okay, gotcha. Um, <laughs> I just know that there's a game like that in the Final <laughs> Fantasy uh, um, universe. But um, yeah, how do you feel? Is there you know, is it too little, too late? Is it possible? I don't know, like looking at the comment section for this one, like, I mean, it's not that people weren't super negative about No Man's Sky, uh, but this is going to be a hard ship to turn around because, I mean, there were so many resources on it the first time, so much was promised, so much was under delivered. Uh, It was really not fun to play. Um, But they mentioned, you know, they're they're reinventing the core gameplay loop. um, And I, I think something that's. I don't know. I hope I hope they can do it. I think this could be 
there's so many there's so much stuff that needs to be redone i think the music was was flat uh the gameplay is super flat i think make the visuals more unique and interesting mm. uh you know they've got they've got a giant task uh ahead of themselves no the Jaegers were cool though no really to me it was it was a neat idea you're basically iron man flying right i feel like that part looked dope yeah, to the, me play it did you play it i played the that the initial like beta and there yeah. was just like the bare bones of it i did enjoy but nothing yeah. else beyond that and i didn't pick it apart too much i just i like the deal flying around i like these cool suits you know yeah. how much do you, th- do you think they should completely overhaul or just like make it you know prettier they gotta, they gotta overhaul so much like mm. you need i mean if you're gonna be in these flying things give us a better sense of speed gotcha right you're just sort of slowly flying to something if yeah. you're gonna give us a story give us a good story uh and with better actors um you know there's there's just so many things that this needs to do this needs to say that whole story that was here beforehand yeah fuck it we're done we're done with it mm. uh that's not what this is anymore uh, but yeah these these mechs need better designs they need to look cool they need to take so many notes from warframe that warframe does what it did when destiny came out and they're like oh shit we need to be something besides this mm. Um, because this was trying to take the lunch from Destiny, right? Like, as that's what it felt a, like. I mean, I think this to. was from those articles we read. I think it backed itself into a corner, so it copied Destiny because it didn't know what to, else to do mm. to a certain degree. Uh, but it didn't even do as good See, a job. This looks cool to me. I don't know if this is actually how it feels when you're playing Maybe it. it is now, or these are the best parts, but this looked cool to me. It's definitely not what it was when it first came. They out. made adjustments for sure since since launch. Oh but. yeah, and they even mentioned like they're on season three now, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Heard no one talk about this. They got to make it fighting enemies, and that's the tricky thing. You're in this big invincible like looking mech suit, although that guy's super invincible. He just does so much tons of damage. Oh, okay. Um, but I think that was my thing with when I was playing it early on. Unless you're fighting like a boss. Uh, you weren't really gonna die. Uh, make it hard. Gotcha. Make it, make it, you know, a back and forth. Make it a challenge. Yeah. And even Destiny does that. When I'm watching streamers play Destiny, their health is usually going down in a fight, going down low. Oh, sure. There's always that. Yeah. That, um, or dying the regularly. Your, they yeah. get knocked out all the time, especially yeah. in raids. So, yeah, they got to make it harder. They got to sell this power fantasy or change the power fantasy. And I think they need to change this power fantasy. Mm. Uh, a bit yeah it's got i don't know it's got to find its identity yeah and really dig into that and yeah, yeah for me i mean it, on paper i feel like i should be a fan <laughs> for some reason it fails for me but uh i like the idea of the gameplay i like the you know the the jaegers or what are they called the javelins, javelins um yeah. they're they're that's a cool design to me but uh, I remember playing it and it didn't just, it didn't keep my interest enough. I don't know if you add a, and this is a dumb, you know, quick fix, but like add a, a single or a first person mode. Right. Um, could that kind of just already change some of the, the gameplay, the, the flow of the combat, the way you're playing the first person mode. Yeah. First person mode was rather was, was what I meant. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't mind that just definitely. to switch up the, the monotony of it. Um, I don't know. But obviously it needs way more than that. Right. But uh, it seems like they're passionate about. I imagine so. Doing this kind of overhaul is got to be crazy fucking expensive, right? Oh, yeah. But it's also you could lose so much more money by just just leaving this dead in the water. So it's like why not just spend from that financial investor side, just spend a couple more million or however much more million, because right. then you will actually see more of a return. Otherwise, this thing is a complete waste of money if you just leave it as it is now. That's the, I mean that's the thing though. If this revamp fails. This was like one of the biggest wastes of money of oh, all yeah. time. It's a huge gamble for sure. Uh, and and I still and I'm really worried about that. They've lost so much faith, and you know it's not a company that people are in love with right mm. now. Um, but yeah, I hope it can succeed. I think my biggest thing with this too is, so they mentioned like they didn't know what to do with the flying and stuff, and then right. like you've got you can be on the ground, you can be in the air. Give us a reason during combat. To switch between the two. Give us enemies that can only do certain attacks while we're in the air. So we need to drop down or we can do a quick drop and like gotcha. get us bouncing all over the place like a goddamn superhero yeah. is what we need out of this game. Was there much combat weird... in the in the air? Because it seems like it does kind of force you. Once you have to fight, you have to go to the ground. Th- Maybe you can hover a bit, but you're not like yeah, jet setting around. I think certain characters could kind of hover. I played the big tanky boy. Gotcha. Um, which, you know, you could switch javelins on the fly. I never did, though. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think certain characters could hover and fight, but at least where I was at, no, I couldn't really hover and fight. So give I us, see. and then yeah, make the roles feel different. Yeah, it's it's got so much. 
I like that they are committed to, because you mentioned, uh, will that community still be there if they, you know, do these revamps? And they're not the most liked company right now, but they'll definitely be not liked even more if they were to just leave this thing dead as it is. So I feel like there's going to be some points they're going to they're going to gain by committing to revamping this thing. Maybe. Um, it's possible. It's just a lot of work for sure. Right. It also Can, makes you worry about like what's the next game coming out of this Bioware. That's true. I don't. Know. This is taking away time from developing that, right? Yeah. So. And I don't know if they have a separate team. What's going on? I would imagine because they're pretty large scale. They have enough people to now divide and do whatever else they've been working on. There's rumors of another um, attempt to do like a, um, what's the last one that failed um, that was really big? Uh, Mass Effect. Another some kind of entry right. into the Mass Effect franchise because um, that's something you could always mine if you make it work. Um, but this is, yeah. And how long is this looking to, you know, how far away from me are, are we from a, the, v- the revamp, the launch of... Anthem 2, you know, is this another two years away? Because uh, there's a lot of work to be done, well, right? Well, they said they're not even like the season. They're not going to have seasons like they have been, which is a big part of a live service mm. game. So they're not going to have the season four or whatever it is. Um, they're going to do updates, but it's not going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's. I don't know. I, I hope. Good luck to them, but. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Whew, nice. Gavin, how's your bladder doing? I feel like I sent. No, nope, I'm, I'm doing good. I feel like I sense. I can feel your bladder you, in my can mind. You stop feeling <laughs> my bladder. <laughs> you can't stop me from mentally feeling it. Um, this one's a bummer and a weird concept, but it's a future that we're in now, Gavin. This is a. If you've seen stuff over the weekend, it's mother reunited with deceased daughter in VR show. This is from right. Lu- Luke Plunkett of Kotaku. We don't have to show the actual video. I've watched it, right. um, but we can kind of pick apart really the concept of it. But uh, Luke Plunkett goes into detail. Last week, a Korean TV show, TV special called Meeting You aired, with which focused on a family's loss of their seven-year-old daughter. And in an unsettling f- finale, the program attempted to reunite the girl with her mother using a virtual reality recreation complete with audio. You can see below, not only was the girl fully replicated in 3D, able to move around and interact, but the mother was given touch-sensitive gloves to accompany her VR headset, and she was able to walk around a limited green screen set. Um yeah, this one at the face of it reminds me of like some Black Mirror stuff. This right. you know weird um, mix of VR and how do we interpret that when people, especially when we've lost them. But uh, th- my mind splinters in all these different directions. I like anytime somebody can be helped with dealing with loss and that kind of thing. I feel like that's that's a positive. Right. Right. I guess the fear is what if you stay like you just want to keep doing this forever and you don't get over that loss. You know. Right. I mean, I I think the only thing with this. Um, that I can sort of see, and I haven't seen it. To me, it's it's kind of creepy. But at the same time, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I think the shitty thing is like I I don't know enough about how her daughter died, but I assume it was an unexpected death. And with those, yeah, it was. When you don't get to say goodbye, that's just like the worst. There's some kind of incurable disease apparently with right. uh, with uh, oh, this so maybe she didn't get to say goodbye. But yeah. that's still so shitty. Um, yeah. So having someone just being able to cathartically uh, say goodbye to a loved one, right? That's really, and that's, we have the power now yeah. with VR and with these haptic gloves you got to wear. I mean, it's it's possible, so why not? Uh, of course, I guess some of the the you know fears is that can this be abused? Can someone stay locked into this world and then they don't cope with it? But uh, yeah, I feel like there's there's really no harm. Although then possibly does this TV show who fo- who fit, footed the bill right. are they taking advantage of this lady and her and her loss by? Uh, putting I mean how different is this from looking at old footage or an old picture right right that's true that's true like having an actual picture or old video that you have in your phone or whatever Um, and this thing wouldn't have been funded unless they had a tv show in the first place because no dev is gonna or you're not gonna be able to pay a dev enough money for them to replicate your family member in vr like that's a lot of work yeah so this only happened because of this tv show and this lady hopefully got to feel some kind of um you know, I just got to help deal with the, her loss. Um, yeah, no, it's it's just interesting in the fact that we're in this future now where this is possible. Right. And now it's only going to keep, you know, exponentially growing from here on. So, like, I don't know how people will deal with that. Maybe it'll be easier to replicate uh, a person who's living or deceased. And how do we deal with that with having the rights to do that kind of thing? What if you're yeah. still alive and somebody's replicating you in VR? That happens with, like, the deep fake stuff, too. And, like, yeah, it's so... Just, yeah, that's creepy. Yeah, that right. It's getting better. Right, so I don't know, but it's this this article kind of made its or its rounds, and made its way on the internet. But yeah, yeah, the video can be found online um, for sure. Go to Kotaku and they'll have that article for you. Uh, Gavin, there's this uh, Dead Cells 
DLC. I know you're a big Dead Cells fan. I wanted Advanced to show you. Seed. Yeah, let's see what your take is on this trailer maybe here. I did see this. Yeah? I feel like I did, but maybe I did. Apparently, it's like a legit animated trailer for the DLC. And I think they've done that before with an animated. I know they did for like an ad. It's always weird when you see it like like this because it looks like his head's on fire. And is if it I not? remember correctly, his head is like a slime thing. The mushrooms are adorable. <laughs> Did he leave his kid or he I also don't think those are in the game. Maybe uh, they're in this oh. DLC. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's terrible. Bosses, DLC. I still haven't played with the pan yet. Can you do that? <laughs> yeah, there's a pan as a weapon. Well, it's like nunchuck pan? I don't know if that's actually the word. <laughs> it's pretty dope. I think he's fit as fake some license. Uh, Why are you? <laughs> it's actually he killed his dad. Okay. Oh my god. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Um, yeah, this game's great. I still haven't paid for the first DLC, which I should, and play through that. Oh, okay. Because um, you can keep playing the game, no problem. It's just like a new area you can go to. Yeah. Um, it's it's really kind of crazy. I almost wish, almost in these games, that you could uh, have it randomize which way you go through all these paths. Because there are so oh. many different paths, but you still choose. I always use the same path. Um, so it'd almost be nice if it forced you to make your run more interesting. Gotcha. That being said, you know, it's, it's nice that they don't, this gives you, your challenge is exactly what you want it to be. I, see. I don't really know the rewards for the risks, but yeah. Yeah. Such a cool game. Oh yeah. I need to play more of it. I have it. I have it on switch. I own it. So I need to actually yeah. continue playing it, but really awesome developers. Um, Gavin, what can I look up? You had some of these. Yeah. So we here. got some stories here. So I know that was kind of that was a lot of grim stories in here. So we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> liven this up. So we talked about that last one was grim, but yeah, we talked about anthem. All right, so uh, and there's gonna be a lot of fighting game stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. One we can cover really quickly. We'll just cover uh, uh, Kunai is out. Uh, you showed me the trailer for that a minute ago. It is a really cool sort of uh, almost monochromish or not monochrome, but like monocolor uh, Metroidvania. Uh, so far, most people are liking it. Uh, getting pretty good reviews. Uh, it's just really... I love the art style. Yeah, the art style is gorgeous. It's clearly like everything's very clear what's on the screen. Um, you're not going to lose anything. And uh, your your weapons affect both combat as well as um, as movement, which, which is great for a Metroidvania. Mm. His face is also adorable. They don't do a good job of showing it in the trailer, but like he's very expressive. Uh, okay. about what he's doing basically no matter what like he's while doing you're playing? yeah like he's making a dumb face while he's <laughs> kunaiing around and it's it's just goofy is that the word for what he's doing when he like kind of lassos or yeah it's a, a kunai that's those little knife things oh okay, um, okay so he throws those and he can sort of grappling hook around and he gets those super early on gotcha so you've already got this crazy mode of transportation um combat looks neat uh, so really this, I mean, this looks right at my alley, <laughs> even though really I'm not cool. huge into Metroidvanias cause I always get lost at some point and then I, I can't give a fuck you know anymore. What? That's my thing too. Yeah. But these bosses look fun. Uh, assuming it's not super long, which I hope it's not. Um, so if it's not super long, I'm super down. I'll beat it really quick. Yeah. Uh, it looks fun. <laughs> Stupid face. <laughs> uh, all right. So Kunai is out is good. Uh, what are we, what are we jumping into next? Uh, Final Fantasy, uh, you know what? Let's do a longer one. Uh, mm -hmm. Evo announced uh, Mortal Kombat snubbed. Yeah, um, what's the so deal with that? So we the Mortal Kombat main stage. Uh, if you want to pull that up, Evo mm -hmm. 2020 uh, lineup. Yeah. Gotcha. So I wouldn't do... Did they have probably like just official... look up the, the image, really. Um, but a big one, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 uh, is is out, uh, is, is back to this. So... That's that's an old game. I'm kind of surprised they didn't do Marvel vs. Capcom three. That was the one uh, that really got me sucked into uh, uh, into Evo. But you know, mm -hmm. there's that famous meme wins Marvel. Um, so yeah, they're gonna bring that out. Uh, Street Fighter five, Who Cares Edition, Tekken seven. <laughs> people love that game. Smash Brothers. I don't know who the headliner is. Uh, mm. Grand Blue Fantasy versus. Uh, uh, yeah, super cool. Uh, Undernight in birth, whatever the rest of that title is, looks great. Samurai Showdown, people are yeah. loving it. I could give a fuck. So Caliber, 
people really like, and then Dragon Ball Z is going to just like blow up. Well, it's going to be awesome. I saw, so there's not a whole lot I understand about Evo, right? I don't follow it too closely, but there was people reacting <laughs> online to the Dragon Ball Z fighters announcement. Is that a big deal that this is there? Was it? It was there think, last year. Was it? Okay. It was I amazing guess. last year. Yeah. Because it was, it was down to, and like the final finale last year was insane too. Um, was with, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 there last year? For like that was no, it hasn't. I mean, it'll be on while. side stages and like side pools. Yeah. Um, but it's like these are the main games that are going to be all over the streams. Right. Is what these are. So there'll be plenty of other fighting games. Um, you know, you'll have people playing Street Fighter 2 or whatever. Gotcha. Um, but these are these are the big headliners. These are going to be get the biggest deal made out of them. Um, and that's incredibly exciting. Uh, it's it's going to be a blast, man. And Marvel. We've got back Marvel. I wish it would have been Marvel three because that's that's what I'm all about. Okay. Uh, but Marvel versus Capcom, these games are nuts. What was the deal with that newest one? It really did not get the love when it comes to these tournaments. Uh, people didn't. Like it. The problem was, um, it took about a year to get good, and by the time that year was done, uh, the audience was gone. Uh, so um, gotcha. But it was good. Uh, it it got good. Uh, people did legitimately hate the art style. I could care less about the art style, but they didn't I, call me. I, for some reason, I love this cartoony style with those yeah. older Marvel, Marvel versus Capcoms. Yeah. Um. So that that looks great. Maybe that'll mean there's going to be an announcement of a new Marvel. Probably not. Mm. Um. But speaking of fighting games, so yeah, this is really exciting. Uh, Marvel. Uh, you know, there was certainly a talk about people getting snubbed. Uh, MK was a big one. Yeah. Um. I was watching. Uh, Especially since we had a new one come out recently. Right. I was watching Maximilian do kind of talk about it a little bit, and I think his theory is probably correct, because uh, some people are saying, you know, it seems like most of the games uh, that are doing really well up there have pretty shitty net code, and it's like, well, maybe that's it, and they want to do more local scenes. But the other mm. thing is, this is going to be on ESPN two. Uh, it's been oh, on wow. ESPN for a few years now, but it's on the Big Daddy two. Um, they've really been concerned about uh, censorship. Uh, especially uh, with games like Street Fighter, uh, you know, there's people barely, especially, well, mainly the women characters are barely wearing clothes in these games. Right. Um, so ESPN, that's really bad for the sponsors. Uh, they make them wear specific skins. Mortal or Kombat, revealing. you can't have someone tearing someone's fucking head off. Yeah, so. it's super gory. Uh, yeah. Skullgirls got snubbed. Uh, there were other games they mentioned. So that's sort of the theory. It's it's sort of a censorship thing. Gotcha. Um, but we still get all these amazing games. Uh, but the fact that, I mean, at that point, like, what are they doing changing the costumes in Soul Calibur? How are they changing some of the costumes right. in uh, in Tekken? Um, but, yeah, so it's going to be a blast. Uh, nice. Grand Blue Fantasy, though, uh, while we're bringing that up. Uh, if you can look up. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it called Grand Blue? Yeah, look up Grand Blue Fantasy. Grand uh, Blue or Grim Blue? Grand, it's right there. Grand Blue Fantasy. Oh, gotcha. Uh, this game is out now, and it's it's fucking redonk uh this is getting yeah. a ton of people who previously have not been into fighting games into fighting games it's absolutely gorgeous it's just stupid pretty yeah. like this is ever since i think it was blaze blue came out with this technology uh to uh make uh these these 3d character models look hand-drawn uh you know you can run this game in 4k and it's it's gonna look every bit as gorgeous and as hand-drawn uh, as so the style is made to look like it's hand drawn, but it's really that's the game. Actually yeah, these going. are 3D models, um, but they use uh, the way they animate it, where where the frames you're not seeing every frame, uh, the way they handle normals and light. Um, there's this whole talk on on how they do this. Oh yeah, uh, wow. and it is absolutely batshit insane. Like the guy on the right looks absolutely 2D. Yeah. Um. So and they th- when they do their talk on how they did it, like the whole mission uh, with making these characters is called kill kill 3D. Um, okay. cause like anything that, that makes it look like a 3d game, absolutely kill it. And I love oh, how I they see. do the, the backgrounds in like a Marvel versus Capcom style where it's like this, clearly it's like a nice 3d background, but even like them or the characters in the background all look stupid 2d, like stupid in a good way 2d. Yeah. Um, and the animations are brilliant. The attacks are brilliant. This game is an absolute joy to watch. Um, Already, yeah, I could I could see that appeal for sure. And and some of the characters are great. That was like two characters. They've got way bazonkers uh, characters beyond that. So that's <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, do a short one. Alien Hominids making a fucking comeback. You know, uh, I'm blanking on the visual, but I know that I've heard that term or that. The that, original uh, like came out when we're on in Newgrounds when we were like in middle school as a flash game. 
Okay. Uh, and then it came out on GameCube probably while we were still in middle school. <laughs> um, Is it like a remake or just people are streaming that again now? Like it's. Uh, I think they're making a brand new Alien Hominid game. It's called Alien Hominid Invasion. Uh, gotcha. This is, you know, game four or five or whatever it is for, for Behemoth. People love Behemoth. Um, but yeah, this game, this game was great. It was basically Metal Slug. Gotcha. Uh, it was super duper hard. It was really creative. Some of the levels were, were nuts. Um, yeah, the trailer's not really going to show anything. We don't know yeah, what the gameplay is like. We assume it's going to be another Metal Slug style. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it's super cool. Really excited to see that make a comeback. You know, those guys are awesome. Dan Paladin. <coughs> you know, if you like Castle Crashers, if you liked uh, whatever that block game was, Battle Block Theater, which I never played because it looked lame, but everyone played it. it says it's amazing. I never played that either. Um, and then not many people played, I don't think, played Pit People. Um, uh, no. <laughs> I think five, five people did. Yeah. So, um, slightly longer. Uh, mm-hmm. Halo Infinite, uh, they were talking a little bit about the new engine and the upgrades yeah. to it. Um, they were very brief about it, but basically kind of what they're saying is uh, now that really the developers and the designers specifically, which you know a lot of times d- designers aren't the most technically minded, uh, they've really given people uh, the tools to make their own tools to do whatever they want so people can prototype they said you know prototyping and trying out new stuff is really quick um somebody spotted in some footage somewhere that there was a grappling hook and they're like it's probably not going to be in the final game but that just goes to show that these designers can try out stuff so quickly and get their ideas into the game really quickly that they can just throw a grappling hook in the game try it out if it works it works if it doesn't that'd be nuts fuck it so these designers are super empowered uh they talked about level creation um And my guess, my guess with these tools is they're probably, and this is my hope. I've been hoping for developers to do this for years. So this is my little, my hope in here. I hope they're using the cloud uh, to further enhance development of this. Uh, Because people talk about like Destiny 2 or Destiny 1 making a level for that. It would like, to make one change in a level could take up to four hours. Oh, for it to um, process or just the ads? Yeah, like changed? downloading everything from a remote server, doing all this stuff. So it's like if you can have just like this cloud process that you can jump in, edit the level, um, gotcha. you know, start playing it then and there. So yeah. if they're really properly using that, you can do all sorts of stuff. If you have ways that you can use temporary tools. Um, <coughs> so I'm really, really hoping. I mean, even collaborating, you know, have multiple people work in a level together. Like right. you could in their, their hammer editor. But or whatever it was called in their multiplayer oh, and editor, Forge or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Forge. But I don't think people have really not very many developers have actually made level editors where you can work together sure. in a level. Um, so for a game, this is their biggest, their most ambitious. It's still going to work on previous gen uh, consoles, and they've also said they've got tech in here that's allowed them to do stuff they've never done before. They may have even said nobody's done before. So we're going to see some shit that's new. That's awesome. This is this is Halo, and not only that, but these tools are so robust. Like, we're gonna get this new Halo. It's gonna be great, and we're gonna get another one. You mean probably like not a, even that long further gotcha. in the pipeline. Like, <coughs> you have these proper tools to make. You just make shit. So, did the last Halo have any kind of Forge uh, <laughs> creation tools? I don't remember I it so. being advertised, at least. Like, they weren't really focusing on it like they have in the past. I don't know. I'd assume so. I mean, you look at how popular, like, especially with Master Chief Collection coming back, people go and play these old mods and sure. s- or these levels people made. Some of these levels are terrible, but people love them because they're fun. Right. They're nostalgic. Um, nostalgic, rather. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have, I have very high hopes for this. Um, I really hope these developers have been as empowered uh, as they say they have. Um, my other prediction, I think there's going to be, aside from like dying and reloading a level, I think you could complete this whole, uh, my prediction is complete the whole campaign without ever loading. I think it's Well, I mean, that's prediction. the whole idea with the SSDs, right? Them being standard. Right, but this is going to be backwards compatible. And I think, th- I think they're going to have Is that tough, you think, then, for them to, like, how is your original Xbox One like OG launch going to handle this? Like the visuals are already, and this is, we're running, running on, I imagine right. on the series X, but like, how is it going to handle this kind of thing? Or is it that expandable where it can, you can use that I tech mean, on the streaming stuff? technology has been around for a while. Like unreal has been doing streaming, like tons of games do these no load oh, okay. times, but it's still hard Yeah, and it's, it's hard to develop it around and it leads to really long reloads when you die. Um, and I'm not saying this won't, but I, I have a good feeling 
whole campaign, you know, God of War style, right? God of War did right. one uncut. Right. I, I think you're going to, I think this is going to have that. That's my prediction. And I really hope they have cloud level editors. And yeah, I'm curious about these tools. They said, you know, people have tools to make tools to, to make the game. So I would agree that, or I like the idea of hearing that they're going out and pulling out all the stops because they really can't drop the ball with this Halo. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a Halo that's launching with the Xbox One, Series X, which hasn't launched with an Xbox <coughs> console since the since the OG right. Xbox. So there's a lot anticipating with this Halo. Also, the last one fell short of everyone's expectations, so they really can't. And it's such a huge uh, um, series where you can't afford also to just drop the ball again. Like, mm-hmm. it's got to be top-notch, and I'm, that makes me – that sounds – you know, hopeful that they're really going to try and uh, put as much tech as they can. And already the visuals look fucking gorgeous too. Oh yeah. But there's more to that under the hood for sure. Yeah. So that, that was a bit of a bigger one, but yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, let's see. Small one. We already said red blue fantasy. Um, uh, these are okay. I don't know enough about this one to make it very long. Mm -hmm. Uh, new trailer for final fantasy seven. And we do get to see, uh, cross-dressing uh, cloud. <laughs> I've um, heard of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, the, just the visuals too alone, like uh, people were really yeah. excited about this uh, new trailer, but I haven't watched it. And people weren't sure. And this gives me a little bit of hope um, because, you know, one of the concerns is, is this going to lose uh, some of the silly? Because Final Fantasy VII really is fucking silly. Gotcha. Like, it'll, it made me laugh out loud in this old-ass game when I'm playing it for the first time last year. Uh, and I still haven't Because you're playing on Switch? Or is that yeah, I was playing doing? on Switch. And uh, it's funny. Uh, this part's pretty early on where you're cro- uh, you're, you do the cross-dressing part. Um, but story-wise, like, it was, you know, it was important to the story. It was a full, you know, section. Uh, you're not cross-dressed for that long. Is this the newest one? This is a breakdown. I'm trying to find the actual it's January uh, trailer. You can buy some time. I think if you do, like... You know, GameSpot or something like that. You might be able to find it. Um, gotcha. I'm gonna copy and paste this into GameSpot. So here's the. Okay, a week ago, <laughs> official trailer. Gotcha. Gotcha. Maybe, might be it. January 31st. Yep. Yeah, but it looks. And they're using uh, in-game. Uh, this is in-game cutscenes, or what's the? I assume it's in-game. I've n- I've never. It looks nuts. If I, it's d- I don't think anything's not gonna be in-game with this. This Jesus. is doable on modern consoles. Uh, yeah, it looks gonna be really cool so you mentioned they're making you know what they've announced the changes they made to gameplay making it a bit more approachable or having that option at least right. but stuff like that cross dressing scene like they're trying to keep that same theme yeah. or comedy or whatever that was happening in that original trying to blend it over to this one we hope so i mean that was i don't it's, know it was an interesting story beat and it would, it would be weird is there anything yeah. that should be left out, like that doesn't work nowadays? I'm sure. I, well, there's. Some, I don't remember any. You know, I'd never played the Final Fantasy VII. I think you definitely make uh, what's his name Barrett. I think you have to make him not just knock off Mr. T. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for sure, because he was exactly knock off Mr. T with guns gotcha. for hands. Um, yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> That's probably there's like this casino area that's really big. I don't know. I, I didn't get that far. I know that was a big. Oh no, that's when you get dressed up. Yeah, oh, I see. That is way. It's a fast makeover. Uh, different than how it happens in the. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that area looks gorgeous. Yeah. That's crazy. It looks really run down in the, in the original version. But yeah, this was an interesting. Uh, god, that guy's so rapey. <laughs> uh, I mean, he wasn't the original, but uh, I see. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be cool. Um, yeah. So that's out. Uh, it looks neat. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm still not sure if I'm interested at all, but this makes me more interested, especially changing the gameplay, because I was never a fan of that right. gameplay style. But at least give me the option to play it more arcadey, you know? Yeah. Oh, and that was one of the characters. And then last thing, uh, another fighting game thing, but Battle for the Grid, uh, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid just came out with a new update. Um, so now you can play it uh, cross-play for everything. So I believe oh. that's uh, PC, Switch, uh, Xbox, and yeah. PlayStation 3. Um, and I believe originally, I think this is the Switch version. Man, that looks rough. Um, but I believe originally it was cross-play on everything except for PlayStation 3. Oh, okay. So they finally got permission. Uh, they redid their lobby system. Uh, so now the lobby system I've heard is one of the best lobby systems in fighting games. Huh. Uh, like it not only matched the best, but it got better. 
Um, but this game's it's just when you watch people play it, it's really fun. I've heard from the fighting game community, like it's it was just unexpected. Even if you don't give two shits about Power Rangers, uh, the creativity is to the max. Uh, they're also taking a lot of good stuff from other fighting games. Like they, I, I, the stream I was watching had the d- devs on, and they're like, "So this character is basically just Wolverine from this game, right?" And they're like, "Well, yeah, well, they're not <laughs> using him." So they're they're really taking these cool characters from other games, putting them together in this game. It's sort of almost like not as much like a Marvel versus Capcom, but it's yeah. sort of getting there, especially with the tag play. But crossing all the different genres or like the seasons of. Uh, yeah power rangers they're able to cross all the different right and i believe some stuff that didn't actually exist in the show like i don't remember there being a pirate yellow ranger or like a yellow ranger that's suited up in that dinosaur mech suit well there's so many right um but damn it's fucking cool um it's it's just a joy to watch and the people are loving it it's is it insane to think that that could be on an evo thing in the future or do they really need to like flesh out get more options I hope game. so. I really, I mean, I'm kind of surprised it's not in this year in some sort of bigger capacity. Um, I think they also need announced like a, a league for it. Okay. Uh, so they're going to get some hype going for it. But yeah, like fighting games, uh, fighting gamers, they got it. They love it. And so I'm glad to see. I've also been told they've done a really good job with updates, like making little tweaks to everyone to make just things a little spicy every update. Gotcha. So they've kept it really cool. And uh Yeah. Nice. I mean, it looks cool. I was always a fan of the original and like maybe the first two seasons of Power Rangers. That was my jam growing right. up. So th- just seeing that, I've never actually sat down and watched a trailer. That looks cool. I don't yeah. know if it's enough for me to jump in, but I also just never been a huge fan of fighting games. Right. But uh, and this is very technical. Fun. So uh, okay. if you or I were to pop online with this sucker, we're going to get that ass whooped. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all fair. the way whooped. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, Gavin. Well, that's it. That's all I have for you this week, Gavin. That was we a long one. It. That was a long one, yeah. <laughs> but it was good. It was fun. We can edit it there. Where can they find you on the interwebs? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Trunk Devs. Awesome. And you can find us, uh, or there's the Plastic Heart Twitter on Plastic Heart, or Twitter.com slash Plastic Heart Pod. There we go. <laughs> All righty, guys. We'll see you next week. That is it for us. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Ba-da, ba-da, ba-da. Nope. <laughs> song for you. Gotta get the, the outro. Out.